In Kharkiv today, there was no sanctuary from Putin's war. This was a residential area being hit by what appeared to be cluster bombs. Here, a shopping centre is bombarded, underlining how dangerous it is to even try and buy provisions these days in Kharkiv. Afterwards, you can see how apartments have been peeled apart by indiscriminate bombing. Potentially, this is a war crime happening in Europe right before our eyes. Today, we drove into the city past columns of Ukrainian militia sent to reinforce the regular troops. We found Ukrainian soldiers holding the southern half of the city have begun to dig in for a long fight. At this checkpoint, a British-supplied Enlaw anti-tank weapon. The, the soldiers here are very tense. There's uh, planes and helicopters that have been heard uh, overhead, and they're preparing now uh, to fire on them if, if, uh, if they are attacked here. Suddenly, we're told to find cover. Airstrikes are an ever-present threat here. The commander tells me they're being shelled for 17 hours a day. Our vehicles are ready to respond to any attack from Russian Federation. There is currently a warning about Russian helicopters and aircraft in this area. Nearby, we see how war is already robbing people of their most basic needs. As I try to talk to people outside this pharmacy, there is a reminder artillery can hit at any time. What are you, what are you queuing for? What is your message to Vladimir Putin? Putin. Putin, get your troops out of here so everything will end in peace. But these streets are littered with the debris of a war that's only just begun. There's plenty of evidence of the ferocity of the battle for Kharkiv. This destroyed tank tells you all you need to know. For now, the Ukrainians are still holding this city. But for how much longer?